Human beings have been around for hundreds of thousands of years. They've been evolving for the last 300,000 years. And there's a particular technique that people have been using, not on purpose, well, at least not for the first 100,000 years, that has kept our ancestors healthy. You know what it's called? Fasting. In this episode of the Harun Rabbani podcast, we are going to explore what it means to fast if you have type 2 diabetes and the implications for your health. So first of all, the biggest question people ask is, can fasting hurt someone with type 2 diabetes? And the answer is, it depends. If that person has got severe kidney issues, liver issues, they're in a very bad condition, then it's probably best not to take up intermittent fasting. However, regardless of whether you're in a relatively healthy position or not, always seek help from your doctor. So one of the things I always emphasize nowadays is this, that the Harun Rabbani podcast is all about education, raising awareness. We are not giving medical advice, we being the royal we. I'm not giving you medical advice, I'm giving you guidance to help you consider the options, better options for you, how you can naturally reverse type 2 diabetes. Fasting can work, but you've got to start small. But let's talk about what kind of fasting that is available to you. First of all, I grew up from the age of seven. I was still growing up before then, but at the age of seven, I did my very first Ramadan fast or Ramadan fast, which basically was about 20 hours a day, 18 hours a day, approximately. It was a long time ago and it was a dry fast. Now, dry fasting is obviously very much a religious thing, but the kind of fasting we're talking about is wet fasting, which means you can drink. So what can you drink when you're doing intermittent fasting? You can drink water with a slice of lemon and a, and a bit of um, salt, pink Himalayan perhaps. You can drink tea, but not with milk in. You can drink coffee, black. You can certainly have herbal teas. You cannot have juices, you cannot have fruit juice, vegetable juice or anything else that will activate insulin production. So please understand that the point of fasting is this. Type 2 diabetes is caused by hyperinsulinemia. Occasionally I say insulinemia, but it's hyperinsulinemia. Too much insulin in your system. What triggers the insulin production? Food, carbs. So the point of fasting is not to eat so that you do not trigger insulin. But the important thing that you may want to understand is a lot of people are going to have men mental blocks. So what do I mean? Oh my God, I'm going to starve myself. So you don't think like that. Focus on how many hours you are going to restrict to yourself to eat. And we'll cover that in a moment. There are different types of intermittent fasting. The extreme end, someone may fast for seven days. It's been done. It's not impossible. In fact, people have fasted for 30 days, but they have been having drinks. Seven days, five days, three, two, and one. Now, myself, I've only done maximum 24-hour fast, which means you have a meal at one time, let's say 5 p.m., and the next meal you have is 5 p.m. again. So it's not quite 24 hours. It maybe depends on how long it takes you to eat. That's about 23 hours of fasting. And even then, it's not quite fasting because you've still got food in the system. If you want to be really strict about it, your fasting starts four hours after your last meal because on average, it takes between three to five hours for your food to go through your system. And so you then enter fasting mode. There are many, many benefits to fasting. Benefit number one, intermittent fasting decreases insulin levels because you are not consuming food and therefore not increasing blood sugar levels. In turn, your body uses energy from fat stores. Number two, levels of human growth hormone increases, which positively affects muscle mass growth and benefits bone density. Number three, cognitive and mental keenness improve due to more blood access to the brain. Number four, your energy level increases. Number five, blood pressure is lowered because the kidneys eliminate excess water and salt. This also helps to reduce inflammation in the body. Number six, old cells break down and are repaired and regenerated. This is autophagy. Number seven, bad cholesterol, LDL, is reduced and good cholesterol, HDL, is increased. Number eight, intermittent fasting can reduce oxidative stress and inflammation in the body. 
Number 9. It may be beneficial to heart health. Number 10. It may help prevent cancer. And number 11. It may help prevent Alzheimer's disease. How do you fast? There are several different approaches. One approach is five days off, two days on. That means five days you eat normally and for two days you are doing your intermittent fasting. Another approach is one day on, one day off. So you fast for one day, you don't fast the following day, you go back to normal and then the day after you go back to fasting. Type 2 diabetes is something that did not happen overnight. It happened because of your lifestyle choices. Dieting is a fad. Dieting does not work for most people. I'm talking about high 90s percent. It actually does more emotional, mental damage for someone who fails. Because most people who do do a diet will fail. So what you're looking for is lifestyle changes. Here's the good news. You already fast. If you sleep 8 hours a day, which is good if you're a diabetic by the way, then you are fasting 8 hours a day. Your pancreas is not awake for the first hour when you wake up. If you don't eat for the first hour, you're already fasting nine hours. If you follow my guidance, which is to say, do not eat anything four hours before you go to bed. So you've got nine hours plus four, you've already got 13 hours. Here's what happens during fasting. So the first chunk of those 12 hours, say, your blood sugar is going to be used and then your fat stores start getting used. You start entering ketosis, which for some people, it's not a good thing. That's why you check with your doctor. For a large number of people, large proportion, it's fine. Again, check with your doctor. You're starting to use your fat stores, which is great because if you want to lose weight, it's useful. By 17 hours, approximately, you start going through something called autophagy, your body starts eating away the decrepit cells, the disease cells, the dying cells, freeing up energy, freeing up your body to focus and play with the healthy cells of your body. How many hours should you do? Start off with that very basic waking up after eight hours of sleep and not eating for one hour and don't eat four hours before you go to sleep, 13 hours. You can do that every day, by the way. It's a lifestyle choice. Following week, you increase it by half an hour or one hour. It should be easy. Literally, even a child can do it. Because I was a child, I did it. And it's not about willpower, it's just making up your mind. So the reality is you want to focus on the time-restricted eating window, TRE, which initially you may be doing for eating 14 hours of the day. Well, reduce that to 12, to 10, to 8, to 6, to literally 1 or 2 hours. And then go back to one that is comfortable for you. Which one intermittent fasting regime is best for you? The one that you're most comfortable. Truth be told, six hour eating window is plenty. I do it almost every day. 10 hours, that's a top end. So if you're doing between six and 10 and you can sustain it daily, you are going to see massive shifts in your diabetes. It may take a few months, but it will certainly have an impact.